Hello, it's time for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and this is episode 121. For the first time ever, we're bringing you a question and answer episode. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you don't know, makes the absolute best sparring gear, great apparel, and awesome accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's tuned in again. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and you should, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests on this show. We're rolling out new items all the time, and one of our most popular recent ones is a three-quarter length sleeve baseball jersey style tee. It's really comfortable, soft fabric, it's gray, and it's got this kind of faded red and on the front, it's got the whistle kick logo in the back. It's one of our most popular sayings from social media. When you feel like quitting, remember why you started. You can check it out at whistlekick.com. Grab yours. Today's episode, like I said, the very beginning, it's going to be a bit different because we're always trying to change things up and bring you some variety. If you follow us on social media, you know we ask a lot of questions because we want to know what you think about things. But through those questions comes conversation and questions coming back to us. And we usually answer those in private messages or something like that. But today, we're going to answer some of those questions here on the show. If you like this show format and you want to see more of it, let us know and ideally, send in a question or two yourself. Our first question comes from Tom. Tom says, what do you think Bruce Lee's career would have looked like if he was alive today? Wow, that's a great question. And it's what I've thought about myself. In fact, I think we've talked about it a little bit on the show from time to time. The idea that Bruce Lee's impact on the martial arts and on popular culture throughout the world was unfortunately in part due to his early death. So I don't think he'd be nearly as big now if he was still alive. But what do I think would have happened? Because he was rather experimental. Some people have claimed him to be kind of the modern originator of MMA, and his philosophy really resonates for a lot of people. I think he would have spent a fair amount of time really exploring Jeet Kune Do and those concepts and bringing things in from whatever he could learn. Of course, you know, we, we know the foundational elements. We know about Kung Fu and we know about boxing being in there. But what else would he have found? What would have changed over time with him? We've had guests on the show who were there early on at the foundation of Jeet Kune Do, and they talked about how things changed, not rapidly, but they were certainly not set in stone at that point. And I would expect that over time, Bruce Lee's philosophies would have solidified a bit, but I doubt that they ever would have been fixed. And I think it would have been really interesting to see what he tied together. Um, I think he would have done a lot more movies. I think we would have seen quite a few. And I think we probably would have seen his reputation fade because of that. Uh, I, I think he probably would have done a fair number of movies through the 80s. And if we look at the early 60s, 70s martial arts films versus the 80s films, the ones in the 80s really don't seem to have the credibility. When we look at the movies that our guests have offered as their favorites, very few of them come out of the 80s. Uh, that was kind of, you know, the, the Van Damme era. We've got certainly got some Jackie Chan movies in there and everything. But when you think about the best martial arts movies, they tend to be either before the 80s or after. So I I really think his reputation would have suffered because he probably would have kept acting. Um, and I bet he would have written a fair amount more. I bet there would be quite a few books out there on various subjects. And I don't think he would have faded away. I don't think he would have allowed that to happen. I think he was too passionate about what he did to ever take a background role. But that may have led to some people not thinking so well, of his insistence to stay in the forefront. I think we've seen that in other industries, but that's a whole other subject. And our next question is from Jackie. 
I'm 18 and love martial arts. I've been training since I was nine, but now I'm at college and I don't have very many options to continue my training. There's a martial arts club on campus, but it's very different from what I'm used to. I'm missing my dojo back home, but it's too far to drive. What should I do? Wow, Jackie, that's a tough spot and one that honestly I went through when I was in college. I went to college three and a half hours away from where I grew up, from the only martial arts school that I ever knew, the one I started at, earned my first black belt at, and I loved it. And here I was on campus in a a major city, but without a car, uh, without really a lot of confidence using the bus system. So I limited myself to what was available on campus. And when I originally started, you know, my freshman year, there was one club and it was a karate club. And it wasn't that different from what I was used to. Uh, Certainly not in hindsight. At the time, it felt really different. But it was really the people that I struggled with. Um, The instructors that came in from off campus um, honestly weren't that good. So I really had a tough go of that. But what it came back to for me and what I'm going to encourage you to consider is, are you going to get better? Are you going to get better versus not training? Because it really sounds like that's the option. That was the option I had. And it just didn't leave me with a lot of choice. So not training at all versus place that I considered substandard. Obviously, not training, you're going to fade a lot faster. Even if my skills diminished from training at this place, they weren't going to diminish at the same rate as not training at all. And that's really what was important to me was maybe I wasn't going to progress the way I wanted to, or even at all, but I didn't want to slide backwards too much. When I look back over that time training in that school, I made some friends and I had the opportunity to experience what I think of now as a a mediocre martial arts school. And when I look at all the traveling I've done, all the schools I've trained at, I was pretty lucky with that first school that I I grew up in. So it gave me some context and perspective to appreciate what I had when I started. And if that's the only thing that I really gained from it, I think it was worth the year and a half, two years that I put in. Our next question comes in from Dan. How long should I stop training if I become injured? I've recently messed up my shoulder and it's getting better, but I really miss training. Can I just go and take it easy? Dan, I'm sorry to hear you're injured. I know how much that really stinks. I've had a number of injuries over the years. And there are a few phases to any recovery, whether it's a martial arts injury or not. And whether or not you train depends on where you are in that recovery process. If you're unable to use your shoulder at all or any injured part of the body, I'm going to say no training. It's just not worth it. There might be an exception, you know, if you hurt your hand, certainly you can protect your hand, um, tuck it into your your belt or something like that. You know, there's a way to immobilize your hand that really doesn't compromise your training. But if we think about immobilizing an injured shoulder, that means no rotation. That means really no training. Uh, it, it's not worth really just kind of stepping in there and walking through the motions Maybe you want to go and sit on the side for the social component. Maybe you want to observe. We've talked on this show a lot about the benefits of mental training. Um, You can certainly visualize what people are doing. You can watch it. And you may even get a different perspective sitting on the side. Of course, you you want to clear that with your instructor. Now, if you're a little bit beyond that point, in recovery, if you can use your shoulder a little bit, then maybe you could train in a way that doesn't require that part of your body. So in that case, I think about keeping your arm tucked at your side or wearing a shoulder brace or something like that. And you really, you got to feel it out. You know, you got to listen to your body and know what it's telling you. Is it telling you, hey, just existing with my arm in this sling hurts. Well, no, you shouldn't be training then. But if you feel like like it's okay, then go ahead and do it. But if you're feeling okay about it, and maybe it still hurts, but you can kind of use it, um, 
light training is okay, but I'd say stop immediately if the pain increases. And you really want to take it easy while you're using any injury because you haven't been using it for a while and the pain's likely not going to show up right away, especially if you're doing something you've missed doing. Beyond that, you know, you get to a pretty good place and, you know, maybe you're 80, 90% healed. And from there you do what you can. You always want to take it easy. You always want to treat an injury with a little more care than you think it needs. And here's why I say it that way. You get better when you're training and you're able to train at your best, right? Like your skills develop, not the injury gets better, but your skills develop when you're at the training hall, dojo, dojang, academy, whatever you call it, and you're putting in 100%. A few extra weeks of inadequate training that actually prolongs your recovery is not nearly as good as a shorter amount of time where you're 100%. So your goal with any injury should not be to train through it, but to recover as quickly as possible. And sometimes that means no training or very little training. But even in the absence of training, there's a lot you can learn. You can learn a lot about yourself. If you're going nuts without training, that tells you something. What else can you do? How else can you adapt? How can you become a better person, a better martial artist without actually going out and training? And we did an episode on training in the car just to give you some ideas of how you can better yourself as a martial artist without doing traditional things in classes. And we'll link to that episode in the show notes. Our final question for today comes in from Alex. If you had to spend the next year training alone with only one famous martial artist or actor, who would it be? (laughs) Wow, that's a, a tough question, but also kind of a fun one, right? When I think about my answer, I think about who could teach me the most. And you know, don't get me wrong, there are a seemingly infinite number of people that could teach me amazing things. And I actually believe anybody could teach me something. But when I think about spending a year with them, it's, <laughs> I'm finding myself drawn to Kung Fu and the Chinese arts lately. The fluidity of it really speaks to me. But also, and we, we've we heard about it a little bit, I, I've got some strong interest in gymnastics and in CrossFit and just movement in general. So when I think about those two things, the person who immediately comes to mind is Jackie Chan. I feel like he'd have a ton to teach me in both the martial arts world and also the movement world. Anybody who's seen his movies knows he moves exceptionally well. All of his stunt work, I mean, he's just a fantastic physical um, expressor. I don't even think that's a that's a word in that way, but he just, he knows how to move his body. And I think that that's something that's important to all martial artists. And it's something that I'm spending a lot of time working on myself. So yeah, if I could spend a year with anybody, it would be Jackie Chan. Plus, you know, it's Jackie Chan and who wouldn't love to say that they trained with Jackie Chan for a year, right? What did you think of this episode? Should we do more of these question and answer sessions? If you have questions you'd like to send in, go ahead. You can use the form at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or you can get to us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Or you could email us, info at whistlekick.com. And please put question in the subject line if you do send us an email like that. If you want to be a guest on the show or maybe you have an idea for some kind of crazy other Thursday show topic, kind of like what we did today and even last week, go ahead, fill out the form on the website, And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do and get discounts and all that good stuff. You can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com or you can buy at whistlekick.com or our sparring gear is on Amazon. That's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.